of moving our legs, going someplace new. A lot of us take those kinds of things for granted. That all changes, though, for thousands of people who suffer spinal cord injuries. Not all of them end up in a wheelchair, but walking again takes time and drive. Scientists at the University of Utah are developing a way to enhance that rehabilitation. Phils Mosley joins us tonight, and this is kind of treadmill meets high tech, right? It certainly is. They're walking in a computer-generated environment, but take the wind we've had tonight, for example. A person with a spinal injury might be just blown over because they can't keep their balance. This experimental system can also create wind, help people train their bodies for the real world. Over the past two months, Zach Lindsay was strapped into a harness. Two, one, go. Then launched on a stroll through a virtual world. This giant treadmill at the University of Utah does more than just spin. Uh, when I turn, it turns with me. It puts a patient in charge of their own rehabilitation. The faster you go, the faster it goes. If you want more resistance, they can give you more resistance. And if you need less, they can give you less. Lindsay has a bullet lodged in his spinal canal. In my chest, my left side, and just played pinball with my insides. And has little feeling in his legs. There were lots of surgeries, and then the rehab began. So in this case, I can focus more on my left side. For example, like with turning left, I put more weight on my left side. Patients are safe. Professor John Hollerbach specializes in robotics in the School of Computing. He says local company NeuroWorks approached him about developing this technology. They found that after a, a point, uh, patients don't progress as fast or they reach a plateau. As patients walk, they have to negotiate turns and avoid buildings. Motion sensors track them, measuring and computing ways for improvement. We're, we're hoping that by uh, making measurements of their, their joint angles at the same time, that we can quantify progress. The system also creates a level of reality. The patient can see buildings on the screens and they are experimenting with wind, even smells. They might, we might, might put actors into the scene like there are cars that they have to avoid. Zach Lindsay says the workout with its twists and turns is exhausting for him. And he thinks the technology has potential. They can help get you started and this can help keep you going. Well, simply being motivated by something new and visual is the most basic attraction to this level of therapy. The first five patients just finishing this pilot program that started early last year. Professor Hollerbach believes it has the potential to be used with patients of all different abilities and injury levels. They have a lot of hope for this type of therapy. It seems like it'd be really good for them emotionally as well, just kind of experiencing all those things. You know, uh, Zach, the patient there, he was talking about how after a while you just get so tired. You go when you sit on a recumbent bike or you get on a regular treadmill and you're not really going anywhere. At least this visually mm -hmm. makes you think you're going somewhere and, and, the it, wind it, and the it helps a little bit yeah and the odors and it makes it feel and all the more realistic and they plan on changing the, you know it looks like basic buildings now but they can add just about anything to that very cool they're safe too that's, that's the big part. You, you see yeah. how the harness works there yeah. in, the, in that picture, and it's all strapped in, and they've got a harness that connects to the ceiling as well. And, you know, of course, this is all experimental in a college lab, but uh, they could make it more refined in the long run. But, hmm. uh, yeah, they're safe. They, if they fall down, they're not going anywhere. Yeah. Right. Cool, Fields. Thanks.